He lives in a pineapple under the sea, and he's gone on some of the most epic adventures in cartoon history. And although you may think that a simple show about Krabby Patties, having fun, and jellyfishing isn't complicated enough to have an actual timeline, well, you'd be wrong. In fact, there is an ironed out canonical order to the events that have happened in Bikini Bottom. And luckily, we have the technology to unravel that history. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and this is the SpongeBob SquarePants timeline from the past to the future. Now, full disclosure, we did everything we could to piece this timeline together. We gathered data from various sources, but in many cases, exact dates are merely speculation. We decided that the air dates for present day episodes are the dates that things take place and thus reverse engineered references to the past to determine when historical events took place. With that said, are you ready to get started? I'm ready! I'm ready! I'm ready! Our timeline starts when the Atlanteans arrive, circa 23,000 BC. After traveling billions of light years, the Atlanteans arrived to colonize this undersea world, bringing with them the oldest living bubble, the Atlanteans people most beloved and treasured ancient relic, one that is over one million years old. From what we know, the Atlanteans were incredibly high-tech creatures accomplished in science, technology, and government. The prehistoric era, Squidward invents jellyfishing, circa 8,000 BC. Way back during a more primitive and uncivilized time, long before the advent of time record keeping, Squidward arrives in the distant past using a time machine. Happy to finally find some peace and quiet, he stumbles upon the primitive sponge in prehistoric starfish, the ancestors of SpongeBob and Patrick. Annoyed with their constant need to torture themselves with jellyfish, he teaches them how to catch them instead ironically making himself the inventor of the activity he dislikes so much. It's called jellyfishing. When he finally has the opportunity to play his clarinet, the sound of his instrument enrages the two primitive creatures, and they chase him back to his time machine, which he uses to leave the era. Bubbles begins his watch, circa 7985 BC. Bubbles the dolphin begins to look over the cosmos. Known as the one who watches, Bubbles spends at least the next 10,000 years watching over the Earth and protecting it from various disasters. The advanced prehistoric era, the dawn of Spongegar, circa 6000 BC. As the prehistoric era continues, an unknown number of years pass and we see some very slightly more recent descendants of the primitive sponge and prehistoric starfish in the episode Ugg. These characters are Spongegar and Patar, as well as a prehistoric descendant of Squidward, Squawk. Now, we know that this happens later than the original events that included the primitive sponge and prehistoric starfish. The evidence includes the fact that Spongegar and Patar have regular teeth as opposed to fangs, showing us that they did evolve from their ancestors. Their way of life is also noticeably more civilized, with much of their day-to-day -day emulating the day-to-day -day lives of present-day Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward. And based on the cave drawing in Spongegar's primitive pineapple, they have already discovered jellyfishing. One day, lightning strikes, resulting in their log that they use to blow bubbles being set on fire. The three cavemen experiment with the flames, burning themselves in the process. Soon, Spongegar realizes that it can be used to cook food, and the three begin cooking. They also encounter prehistoric versions of Mr. Krabs. When all is said and done, Spongegar and friends have discovered fire. The trio begin to fight over the fire, but Squab blames them for it being put out. Before he can strike them over the head, lightning strikes him and the two other cavemen cook marshmallows over his charred body. Atlantean growth, distant past. The Atlanteans spend centuries building the most advanced weaponry in order to defend themselves against invaders. They eventually give up on warfare and lock their weaponry behind a giant locked door, an example of what must be done if one wants to live in harmony with all creatures. The Death of the Dutchman Before 3000 BC The Flying Dutchman claims that he hasn't had to wear shoes in over 5000 years because he's a ghost. This comment tells us that he died over 5,000 years ago. I haven't worn shoes for over 5,000! 
thousand years! Even though pirates of his variety did not exist during this era, but we'll take his word for it because we don't want to end up in Davy Jones' locker. He haunts the seas because his body was used as a window display and never was put to rest. The birth of King Neptune, circa 2990 BC. 5,000 years before the episode The Clash of Triton, King Neptune was born. Later, when his father would die, he would become the Roman god of the sea. We know his age because the episode aired in 2010 and involves Neptune celebrating his 5,000th birthday. In 2983 BC, Neptune's moon and Neptune's sun rise for the first time and then die down for 100 years. They will continue to rise every 100 years on October 7th. The Middle Ages, circa 905 to 1304 AD. Many millenniums have passed and Bikini Bottom has developed into a much more civilized and advanced place. It's called Bikini Bottom Shire. The totalitarian tyrant, Planktonomore, ruled for a brief period until SpongeBob and Patrick were sent by King Krabs to rescue Princess Pearl. They ultimately slayed the dragon jellyfish. During this era, there were many noteworthy places. King Krabs Castle was a massive estate equipped with a guillotine and a dungeon. Squidly lived there briefly, and it's suggested that this may be the medieval Krusty Krab. Planktonomore's tower was implied to be the medieval Chum Bucket, and also home to Glassball Karen. We also see the village where most of the commoners lived, filled with establishments that included an armory and the ye old bowling alley. In 1199, the two chosen ones, along with King Krabs, invented Krabby Patties. In 1701 AD, the Star family takes control of Bikini Bottom. Ancestors of Patrick Star, it would ultimately be revealed that the true present-day royal lineage would be Gary. Neptune's Son, circa 1010 AD. King Neptune turns 4,000 years old and locks his son, Triton, up in a magical shrinking cage, locking him away until he learns how to be a proper god like his father. Atlantis disappears, circa 1201 AD. At some point during this time period, Atlantis sinks. The Neptune Dynasty, circa 1804 AD. The Star family loses power and ultimately the Neptune Dynasty takes the throne in Bikini Bottom. The quest for the Banana Peel, circa 1889 AD. The chimps, who would eventually become the beneficiaries of Sandy's undersea treedom, begin their 117 year search for a banana peeler. This is where our research money went. The Western Era early 1892 to 1895. During the Western era, Bikini Bottom was called Deadeye Gulch, or Bikini Gulch, in which Deadeye Plankton ruled the entire town with the exception of the Krusty Cantina, which was owned by William Krabs. SpongeBuck defeats Deadeye Plankton in a duel by stepping on him. The townspeople memorialize SpongeBuck with a golden statue. Patrick Revere warns people that man-eating mollusks were coming. The mollusks are coming! The mollusks are coming! The mollusks are coming! The Pirate Era, circa 1897. Redbeard Krabs assembles a pirate crew. Redbeard Krabs lives to be well over 100, as he's later seen visiting his grandson, Mr. Krabs, over 100 years later. First Annual Snail Race, circa 1902. The first annual Great Snail Race occurs. Hey, SpongeBob! Check out my new snail! The winner is ultimately Lightning Larry Luciano. This event would quickly become a prestigious annual tradition. Heroes are born, circa late 1800s to 1900s. Sometime around the turn of the century, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are born. Mermaid Man first uses his utility belt sometime around 1937 which he reveals in the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 4, when it's stated that he's worn the belt for 65 years. To the meatloaf! The rivalry continues, circa 1942 to 1951. Eugene Krabs and Sheldon Plankton, descendants of King Krabs and Planktonomore, are born. The two are best friends from birth, and the two eventually go into the restaurant business together until they accidentally kill Old Man Jenkins and have a falling out. During the conflict, a shelf is knocked over, dumping various ingredients into the patty batter and recreating the Krabby Patty formula, which Mr. Krabs is left with. Mr. Krabs' Krabby Patty restaurant is well loved by customers, while Plankton's Chum Burger is terrible. The sea monster falls asleep, circa 1928. The sea monster falls asleep 79 years before SpongeBob and Patrick awaken it and sell it Krabby Patties. 
I've been asleep for 79 years. Man Ray Attacks, circa 1954. A young mermaid man and barnacle boy dump tartar sauce on Man Ray, trapping him and saving Bikini Bottom. Mr. Crab's early endeavors, circa 1950s to 1960s. A war occurs sometime in the 1950s. It's stated that Mr. Krabs serves in the Navy sometime in this era, and at some point, Mr. Krabs assembles a sea crew and searches for treasure. He ultimately goes bankrupt and sells the ship. So I fired me crew and sold me ship. Eugene Krabs falls into a deep depression until he decides to purchase a bankrupt retirement home called the Rusty Crab. He converts it into a restaurant he calls the Krusty Crab. He paints the K onto the sign himself. The Krusty Crab also endures the Chum Famine of 59. 1959 also marks the final year that anyone would take a break at the Krusty Crab. In 1960, Mr. Krabs installs the giant tartar sauce bin in the kitchen of the Krusty Crab. This can has been here for 50 years! It is full until the opening of the Krusty Krab time capsule 50 years later. In 1979, Plankton would make his first attempt at stealing the Krabby Patty formula. The birth of Squidward Tentacles, October 9th, 1977 the date everyone's favorite squid is born, destined for a lifetime of being annoyed by Spongebob. The annual Fry Cook Games begin, circa 1980, a series of events in the fast food coliseum. Mr. Krabs and Plankton would compete against one another for years to come. Mr. Krabs won a medal one year for lifting two barrels of pickles. The birth of Larry the Lobster, January 8th, 1984. The lovable lobster is born. He would go on to be one of the most well-liked residents of Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob's first Krabby Patty, circa 1985. SpongeBob has his first Krabby Patty inside his mother's womb. Friends are born, 1986 to 1987. On January 14th, 1986, SpongeBob is born. On February 26, 1986, Patrick is born. The two would become lifelong best friends. On November 17, 1987, Sandy and Randy Cheeks are born in Texas, United States. SpongeBob's early childhood, circa 1990 to 1992. SpongeBob receives Gary as a pet and Patrick as a friend. Friendships that would last a lifetime. SpongeBob would have Mrs. Shell as a kindergarten teacher. Patrick wrote a poem in gym class, so the kids threw balls at him. The birth of Pearl Krabs, May 12, 1990. Mr. Krabs' daughter, a whale, is born. Nobody knows exactly how that works, but we don't question it. Krusty Krabs' new hires, 1995 to 1999. Around 1995, Squidward joins the Krusty crew. In 1996, after teaching SpongeBob how to be a good fry cook, Jim quits the Krusty Krab and not SpongeBob got hired. Finally, on May 1st, 1999, SpongeBob joins the Krusty crew. The Tree Dome, circa 1998 to 1999. Sandy Cheeks arrives in Bikini Bottom with the intent on conducting science experiments in her tree dome. On May 2, 1999, Sandy meets SpongeBob and the two become fast friends. Sometime in 1999, Tree Dome Enterprises Limited is founded. The saga begins, circa 2000 to 2001. February 14, 2000, SpongeBob and Sandy try to give Patrick the best Valentine's Day present ever. Jealous of all the gifts SpongeBob receives, Patrick wreaks havoc across a carnival. You must think I'm pretty dumb, huh? Yes! February 15, 2000 is Annoy Squidward Day, an actual day that SpongeBob has marked on his calendar. On September 28, 2000, the annual Fry Cook Games celebrates a 20-year milestone. On Halloween 2000, the Flying Dutchman appears to tell everyone how offensive it is that everyone dresses up like him on Halloween. On December 23, 2000, Sandy brings Christmas to Bikini Bottom. Christmas who? On September 28, 2001, the 21st annual Fry Cook Games takes place. Mr. Krabs and Plankton are represented by SpongeBob and Patrick for the first time. The two friends clash in bun wrestling, but ultimately learn to cherish their friendship once again before breaking the tie. Life in Bikini Bottom, circa 2002 to 2017. Sometime in 2002, Mr. Krabs earns his one millionth dollar. Mr. Krabs also opens Krabby Land. In 2003, the 102nd running of the snails occurred. Lightning Larry Luciano, still alive, lit the torch for the games. Rocky was crowned winner over both Gary and Snelly. In 2004, Mr. Krabs and Plankton celebrate their 25 years of rivalry. In 2005, the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy movie is made. 
In 2007, SpongeBob and the crew go to Atlantis. On April 17th, 2009, SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, Sandy, and Mr. Krabs are lost and have to get back home by riding a wave called the Big One. November 6, 2009, the 50th anniversary of the Krusty Krab. May 1st, 2010, SpongeBob finds the tartar sauce bin empty and opens the Krusty Krab time capsule. A time capsule spectacular is held at the Krusty Krab. June 5th, 2010, King Neptune has his 5,000th birthday at the Krusty Krab. He is sad that his son Triton isn't there. SpongeBob frees Triton and causes havoc in Bikini Bottom. This makes Neptune happy to see that he's able to use his powers and thanks him for the best birthday present ever. July 15th, 2011. A race through a winter wonderland is held with a million dollar prize, but it ends up being a trap. April 8th, 2012. Glove World is destroyed and replaced with Glove Universe. SB 129, 2017. Squidward gets stuck in the Krusty Krab freezer and is frozen for 2,000 years. The SpongeBob Movie, 2034. In 2034, the Krusty Krab 2 opens. Mr. Krabs promotes Squidward a manager, believing that SpongeBob is too immature. I'm not mature. The reason this takes place in 2034 is because SpongeBob states that he has received the Employee of the Month award 374 times in a row. That's 31 years and 2 months. But in the episodes Employee of the Month and Breath of Fresh Squid, SpongeBob doesn't get the award. Because those two episodes are two years apart, that adds an additional four years. So, 1999 plus 31 years and four months equals 2034. Plankton steals Neptune's crown and frames Mr. Krabs. King Neptune threatens Mr. Krabs for the alleged thievery. SpongeBob promises to retrieve the crown, and thanks to Neptune's daughter Mindy, he agrees with the proposal. Thanks, Mindy! SpongeBob and Patrick leave for Shell City. Meanwhile, Plankton steals the Krabby Patty formula and enslaves citizens with mind control. SpongeBob and Patrick are pursued by Dennis, who is ultimately stepped on by a cyclops, who takes SpongeBob and Patrick to his beachside store. They find the crown and defeat the Cyclops by setting off the sprinkler system and ultimately get a ride home from David Hasselhoff. They return the crown before Neptune can execute Mr. Krabs, performing the hard rock ballad Goofy Goober Rock. Saved, Mr. Krabs promotes SpongeBob to manager of the Krusty Krab 2. Time Capsule, 2060 to 2085. In 1960, the Krusty Krab capsule is opened for future Bikini Bottom to see. In 2085, SpongeBob tells his grandson about the Great Train Caper. The Future, 4017 AD. Squidward is unfrozen from the Krusty Krab freezer. He meets SpongeTron, a descendant of SpongeBob, and quickly learns that the future is not for him. Everything is chrome, and there is a SpongeBob for every letter of the alphabet, all 487 letters. He immediately leaves the future. SpongeHenge, circa 5007. Aliens discover the SpongeBob stones, eight stone replicas of SpongeBob in jellyfish fields. Nothing, unknown. The realm of nothingness is created, or has always existed, and Squidward arrives from his time travel journey. He admits that he misses everything from his old life. Yes, even SpongeBob. He makes it back to the time machine. Wow, millennia of SpongeBob. What a legacy. Let us know in the comments section what your favorite era of Bikini Bottom was. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, such as our SpongeBob characters Good to Evil. And let us know what cartoon needs the timeline treatment next. But more importantly, stay wicked.